It was great people watching because Misha could not get over what some of these people were wearing. Welcome back! It's great to have you guys on my channel again, and if you haven't subscribed yet, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. It helps me out a lot, guys. So for today, I'm going to talk to you about 16 things that shocked my boyfriend about U.S. culture. So if you watched a few of my videos in the past, and you are probably familiar with the fact that my boyfriend is from Germany, but has been living with me in the U.S. for about four months now. And even in that relatively short amount of time, he has been exposed to so much American culture. I've taken him to eight different states. He's been to an American wedding. He saw the protest for the Kavanaugh confirmation. He's seen the Amish and he's been to some of their stores. He's been to an American concert. Granted, it was a British band, but still, it was an American concert. He's gone tailgating for a college football game, which I made a whole video about. I'll link it in the description below. And he's gone to a gun raffle and even the shooting range. And so many more things, guys. I couldn't possibly list it all out. It would get very boring for you. The point is, he's seen a lot. And it has been so much fun for me to share with him everything about the US, especially because he shared so much about Germany with me. And really, I have learned more about my own country through him, which maybe that sounds a little weird, but he'll point out something that's like different or weird to him or something that he didn't expect to see or happen, and he'll ask me about it. And sometimes, of course, I know the answers, but other times, like, I didn't even think about it because it was completely normalized to me. So I've never really thought much about it. Or maybe I don't know why we do that thing the way we're doing it or why whatever is in existence. And so then I'm having to kind of like look into it to be able to answer his questions about it. And it's always really interesting to see like what Misha is surprised by. So Misha is someone who has consumed a lot of American media, whether it's through TV shows or movies or video games. He also reads all of US news. Like he is so up to date on our current events. So for him to be surprised by something means that he has never encountered it anywhere else or it means that he's seen it in like a show or a movie but didn't think it was like an accurate depiction of reality as we all know that some things can get distorted in movies and shows and so on and so that's what I want to talk to you guys about today unfortunately I wasn't able to convince him to be in this video with me so you guys are just gonna have to deal with me explaining his perceptions but I promise we've talked a lot about them so I feel like I can accurately portray what he thinks about you know these specific things that I'm gonna talk about and I'm not gonna like bring up things that we have all already seen in a YouTube video or read in some article okay I'm not gonna talk to you guys about American small talk we all know Americans love small talk but I will say that Misha legitimately was surprised by how much it happens <laughs> and he's looked at me a few times and he's just like babe can you please stop becoming friends with like every stranger you come across because I can't help it I love American small talk it's part of who I am Am, and I'm probably not ever gonna be able to stop. So if you're not American and you're watching this, hopefully you'll learn something new about the US that you didn't know before. And if you are American watching this, maybe you'll go through kind of what I'm going through, realizing like, wait, that's not normal. I thought everybody did that. Because as it turns out, we are not that normal. <laughs> All right, let's get into it. So Misha and I were in Colorado about a month ago and we went into this random restaurant to grab lunch and as soon as we walked in our shoes were crunching on all of these hard shell peanuts that were just all over the floor of the restaurant and we walked to our table and we sit down and there's this like metal bucket of hard shell peanuts on the table and Misha's like looking at me like what the f is going on and I just start laughing because it's such like a small thing that I would never think to explain to someone about American culture. Um, so we have some restaurants, very few, but we have some restaurants that have this sort of gimmick where they give you hard shell peanuts and they expect you to throw it onto the ground. Like literally that's what they want you to do. There is no dish for you to put the shells into. This particular restaurant, actually all the servers were wearing these cute shirts with all these like little slogans about the restaurant on the back. And some of those slogans 
were regarding how they want you to throw the shells onto the floor. That is what you're expected to do. It's custom in these restaurants. And these restaurants aren't common. I think, I think I've only been to a few outside of Texas Roadhouse, which is a huge chain restaurant that does do this. So we do have a chain restaurant that does it. Otherwise, it's not that common to find these restaurants. I have a friend from Nebraska who told me that it's way more common in the Midwest to see bars and restaurants doing this than anywhere else he's lived in the US. Um, so maybe, maybe it's more commonplace there, but it's not like every restaurant you go into, there's just gonna be peanut shells laying everywhere. Please don't think that. Um, but it was still really shocking for Misha to see that. Again, I would never think to tell someone about these restaurants because they're such like a niche thing. And I was really thinking like Misha came in here without me like being an American to kind of like tell him like this is okay, it's normal, um, normal, <laughs> then wonder what he would have thought. And I tried to look back to find like what the origin of this is, what restaurant first started this, what time period and more importantly why and I couldn't really find any of that information it's just a gimmick that has somewhat become a tradition for some restaurants all right so the next one are how US food companies do their nutrition facts so we have the Food and Drug Administration or the FDA and they have standardized how the nutrition facts have to look in terms of content and appearance and like the organization of it and so on and it looks very familiar to what you would see in Germany w with regards to content right um, but one thing that is not standardized is the serving size of the food right so in Germany Misha is really used to looking at any food package and the nutrition facts will be based off of a hundred grams no matter if it's a big bag of chips a small bag of chips the nutrition facts will be based off of 100 grams. So what you can do is look at two types of food and very easily compare and decide which one is a healthier option or which option is best for you because it's so easy to do that. Well, in the US, he hasn't been able to do that and it's actually been pretty frustrating for him um, because our serving sizes are not standardized. In fact, I think that some food companies very much use it as a tactic to basically manipulate consumers into thinking that their product is healthier than what it actually is. So for example, you might pick up a bag of chips, right? And we all know chips aren't healthy, but just roll with me, okay? So you pick up a bag of chips and you look at the calorie content. You're like, oh, 200, 200 calories. That's not that bad, right, for this bag of chips. And then you're like, looking harder and you have to look at the serving size because again it's not standardized like any package you pick up in Germany you know it's off of 100 grams but here it isn't so then you have to look at the serving size and be like oh 200 calories for only eight chips well there's like four times that in this bag so you can't look at it and be like oh it's a 200 calorie bag of chips it's an 800 calorie bag of chips right so that's something that really shocked him uh, again something I never ever really thought about um, I mean I noticed before that our serving sizes are a little wonky and arbitrary right but I never really thought about a country doing it differently and I just for the life of me can't remember really looking at the nutrition facts that much in Germany um, I was pretty much just buying uh, produce and meats, right? So I didn't notice that they had a standardized thing. And I had never thought in the US, why don't we standardize our freaking serving sizes? But now I'm really thinking about that. Why don't we standardize our serving sizes so that we can all be able to do this a heck of a lot easier than what we are right now. And speaking of calories, Misha was really surprised to see that some of our restaurants have the calorie count of its dishes printed right on the menu or on the board and again the FDA the Food and Drug Administration requires any restaurant with at least 20 locations or more to print their calorie count onto the menu and the idea is for people to be able to make healthier choices right so most of the restaurants I had taken Misha to here were like hole in the wall type places or like one and only like it's the only restaurant like this you know type thing I wasn't taking him to chain restaurants but then he asked me to take him to an Olive Garden he wanted to go to the Olive Garden guys 
My mom would be so disappointed to know that I took my boyfriend to an Olive Garden because their food is straight garbage, except for their breadsticks and salad, that's okay. But otherwise, it just does not taste like real food. If you're an Olive Garden fan, I'm sorry. Um, but he really wanted to go to an Olive Garden because he's watched a bunch of SNL skits or has seen it referenced in different shows and movies and so on. And he wanted to see, like, what is an Olive Garden? He also wants to see Cheesecake Factory and Applebee's. I can't talk him out of it, guys. I've tried, okay? Uh, so he opened up the menu and he saw all of these calories, you know, being listed out. And again, it's a, it's a chain restaurant, more than 20 locations, so they have to, FDA requirement. Um, and he was asking me about it, and so I was able to explain to him why the calories aren't on there. He hadn't really encountered that before in Germany, maybe a restaurant here or there, like fast food restaurants. Then I looked it up because I was interested. Does this actually shape people's behavior? Do they actually make healthier choices since they can see how many calories are in their food? Because if you're looking at like a chicken and pasta dish and it looks pretty innocent, you're like, oh, that's, that doesn't look too bad, I'll get that and then you see like 1300 calories and you're like, holy shit, that's a lot of calories. I am not getting this. Um, I think that it would work, but as it turns out, there are quite a few studies out there showing that this does not work. It doesn't curb people's um, choices. They just are still gonna eat whatever they wanna eat. And actually, there were some studies to prove that this was harmful for people on super restrictive diets or who are suffering from eating disorders because it's just kind of like enabling them to be able to do calorie counting. And also it looks like it's like a mark of judgment that they're taking in because they're seeing exactly how many calories and so is everybody else. Everybody knows how many calories they're ordering, right? Um, so that was something that I learned. All right, I've got one more food related one for you guys. I love food, right? So I'm trying not to talk too much about it. Um, but we have these types of restaurants called drive-ins and Misha has seen drive-ins in movies. He's familiar with the concept from movies like Grease or The Founders, but he thought that it was like a relic from the 50s and that we didn't really have these anymore. Well, we do still have them, not commonly, but we do. And the most famous one is called Sonic because it's like a chain fast food drive-in restaurant. So it's set up where you have all these stalls, you drive your car into a stall and you park. And it's not your traditional drive-in in the sense that you don't have like a server coming to your car to take your order. You have a machine right there and you're able to use a speaker system to be able to do your order and you can pay right there too with your card even. But then you have the server will come out and bring you your food and of course you're expected to sit in your car and eat, which is like the primary concept of a drive-in. I'm not the biggest fan of drive-ins because I just don't really see the point in them. If I'm driving along and I want to stop for food, I either want to get out of my car and sit and eat, right, to get out of my car, or I just want to get the food and get going to wherever I'm going to eat, right? Um, and Misha told me that he doesn't really think this concept would be very popular in Germany because a lot of Germans don't like to eat in their cars, which kind of fits into this comment I've heard before that Germans value their cars and houses even more than your average American. Uh, so interpret that as you will. Uh, but yeah, you don't see drive-ins in Germany, so that was like a totally new experience for him. And then the other type of restaurant that uh, I took him to that he was really surprised by was like a walk-up window style restaurant. So you park your car, you get out, you go to this building and it has a window there and you order your food, you pay right there, and then you wait a little bit and it comes out usually of another window because the whole kitchen is inside that building. And then there's all these picnic tables sitting there for you to be able to sit and enjoy your meal or you can leave, of course. So it's a really easy like uh, concept for a restaurant to be able to take on because they're not really you know, having this huge facility and all these tables and they don't even have wait staff. They really just have like a kitchen and then everybody can sit in this like picnic type area. So it's really easy for them and that was something new for Misha to see. And usually at these places you just get typical American fare like burgers and hot dogs and fries and milkshakes and stuff like that. It's nothing too fancy. It's, it's more like a fast food type thing. But one more thing about restaurants, although not related to food, I'm really trying not to talk about food this whole time, uh, but tipping. Tipping has been a struggle for Misha here, and it has been so funny for me to watch 
because he's used to Germany where when you get the bill you just round up a few euro and you tell the server what you want your total bill to be, right? And then they they are calculating out how much to take out as a tip for them, right? It's really easy on the customer in that way. Well, here we do like a 15 to 20% tipping thing. And so you're having to take the bill and calculate out what 15% or 20% of the bill is, write that down if you're paying with a credit card, which is what we normally do. And then you total those two numbers up to write down like what the total charge to your card should be. And Misha is just like not giving into this this method and the the you know the process of it. He wants to just write down what he wants his total bill to be. And so he keeps on writing down the total and then he's having to find the difference um, between the total and the bill to like calculate out the tip for the server. And it's just cracking me up guys because I'm like just do it the way we do it and it would be so much easier but instead he's, he's doing it backwards and then he's always having me double check his math which is never a good idea because I am awful at math and he's actually really good at it. Yeah. Yeah, that's been fun to see. <laughs> okay, so no more food guys, I promise. We'll move on. Um, the next one I'll talk about is hand sanitizer. Turns out we have a lot of hand sanitizer around and Misha pointed it out and he's right. He kind of shattered the glass for me. We have hand sanitizer dispensers everywhere in the US. You see them of course in hospitals and restrooms, sure, but you see them in grocery stores and regular stores and shopping malls. You see them in restaurants. You see hand sanitizer dispensers everywhere and I had seen them. I've used them before, right? But I never really thought about it. It was just a fact of life. It was normal to me to have this hand sanitizer always available. And I didn't notice when I was in Germany that there was a lack of hand sanitizer. So that was something he pointed out to me and so I started really thinking about it. I was like, has it always been like that? You know, like why do we have this obsession with hand sanitizer? And all I can think about is that back in 2009, we had this huge outbreak of swine flu and President Obama even declared it a national emergency. And then he himself told people to start using more hand sanitizer as like a preventive measure to try to cut down on how many people were getting the swine flu. And yeah, that's when I think I started noticing like a huge uptick in hand sanitizer use and dispensers everywhere you go and I guess you know Germany didn't get on that train so you don't really see hand sanitizer everywhere over there and yet they're all perfectly healthy. Another thing that really threw Misha off are our four-way stops and our right turns on red. So in the US we have four-way intersections, in Germany of course there are also four-way intersections but in the US if there's not a red light oftentimes it will be a four-way stop, meaning every lane has a stop sign, right? And it'll have like a sign underneath a stop saying four-way stop so that you know everybody's gonna have to stop. Or it'll say two-way stop so that you know only you and the lane across from you has to stop. The other ones have just the, the right-of-way, they're through traffic, right? In Germany, they don't have four-way stops. You won't see an intersection where every road, you know, has its own stop sign. You might see two-way stops or you will be negotiating this really fun type of yield situation that they have and was honestly my least favorite law with driving in Germany. I hated this yield thing because it was so alien to me and I had to really think it through every single time. So. I don't want to get into the details of it, but you just don't ever see four-way stops. And that was really surprising for Misha to, to see and pick up on. And then the other thing, which was far more startling, <laughs> was our right turn on red. So I was driving along with him and I came up to a red light and I wanted to take a right turn and I'm looking to the left, traffic was clear and I started to execute my right turn. And Misha was like, whoa, 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 what are you doing? The light is red, right? Because of course, like to him, I'm running the red light right now. So he's trying to tell me to stop. 
But in the US, that is a perfectly legal maneuver. You are allowed to take a right on red unless there's a sign at the intersection clearly, you know, denoting that as, you know, no turn on red intersection, or maybe it says no turn on red during specific time frames, like usually busier traffic times. But in Germany, that is a highly illegal move. And I was laughing because not only was he freaking out for no reason, um, but I, when I first moved to Germany and started driving there, I really had to talk myself through and remind myself, do not take a right on red because it was so, you know, ingrained in me that I was able to do this maneuver. Um, so it, it took a while then for me to come back and get used to taking the right on red. So if you're not American and you come to the US uh, and you rent a car, remember that you can take a right on red unless there's a sign telling you not to. And if there's someone behind you wanting to take a turn and you're got your blinker on to take a turn, you should probably take the turn because otherwise they're gonna start honking at you with impatience because it's just so, you know, that's a normal thing. It's, it's a part of our traffic laws. So maybe you've heard about the fact that our pharmacies are in grocery stores or stores like Walmart and Target, or we have pharmacies like CVS and Walgreens where primarily it's a pharmacy, right? But it also comes with basically a store selling convenience items and makeup and all sorts of stuff, right? So it's it's much more than just a pharmacy. Well, in Germany, they have standalone pharmacies or Apotheken, and they sell pretty much only health-related items as long as, as well as giving you prescription meds. So you'll see like medicated face wash, you know, special sunscreens. Maybe you'll see like. Um, you know, like the heating patches that you can put on yourself. Those types of things will be sold at the pharmacy, but you don't see the, these huge stores like what we have with CVS and Walgreens and so on. So Misha is really used to seeing standalone pharmacies. Those are normal for him. I'm not used to seeing those because we don't have those really in the States. Maybe like a small hometown pharmacy here or there, right? But usually not. Um, the chains have definitely really taken over the scene. So. We were in Colorado and we were on a bike ride and it was, it ended up being a very difficult bike ride but also very long and we didn't expect to be out that long so Misha really wanted to get some sunscreen when we went kind of like on the outskirts of this town and he saw a building with like a green cross on it and he was like oh there's a pharmacy right there because of course a cross is like an international type symbol for medical stuff so he expected that to be a pharmacy and I'm just behind him laughing and I'm like that is not a pharmacy babe he's like sure it is it has a cross on it I was like it's a green cross <laughs> that's not a pharmacy and so he's like pedaling up to it because you know of course he he thinks it's a pharmacy and he gets up there and it's a weed shop, right? Because it's Colorado, right? And he was not expecting that. So I'm really used to seeing weed shops. I lived in Washington State. I've been to Colorado a lot. There are more and more states that are legalizing weed and so it's becoming common to see. Uh, but Misha was not used to it coming from Germany where weed shops don't exist and their marijuana laws are very different from ours. So that was funny to see, you know, that whole thing play out to where, you know, he associated it with being a pharmacy because of the cross and the standalone, like all of these factors coming together to explain like why, why he thought he would be able to buy sunscreen in this weed shop. So Misha was also really surprised to see all of these ice machines that we have in all of our hotels which is something again that I just never really thought twice about especially because I used to work in a hotel as a maid um, and I'm really familiar with what our hotels are like and the different features and you always have an ice machine and usually in the rooms you even have like an ice bucket to be able to take to the ice machine and fill up well, Misha was just not really used to seeing it. And I, I know that I've stayed, I've stayed in really big hotels in Germany and I've stayed in really small hotels in Germany. For sure the small ones, I never saw an ice machine, but I don't know, maybe the really big ones do. And Misha's just not, wasn't really staying in those that often. But yeah, we have ice machines and like all of them, even the really small ones. And he was looking at it and he was like, why, why would you need this? And so I'm thinking about it, I was like, well, I mean, people use ice for all sorts of stuff. So maybe you want a nightcap before you go to bed or maybe you have a cooler because you're on a long road trip and you're wanting to keep your like drinks and your food in the cooler 
cold or you're going camping or who knows, right? But Misha just couldn't like, you know, he was really shocked by the presence of all of these ice machines. And it kind of went along with this thing that I've heard before that Germans don't use ice. Now, I definitely don't agree with that. I saw plenty of ice when I was in Germany. Um, but there is definitely a stark contrast in how much ice Americans use compared to Germans. Like Americans love their ice, they highly value it, people are constantly, I mean our, we have refrigerators with ice machines, we have constant like huge coolers at different grocery stores selling bags and bags of ice. People love ice here guys. It's not really like that in Germany so it was really shocking to Misha. So like I said, Misha has seen a lot of things in movies or TV shows that maybe he thought was like a distortion of reality or just, just not an accurate depiction of what it really is like in the US. And one of those things is how dangerous our wildlife is. And it's to the point where like a simple hike or an innocent run in, you know, the woods somewhere can end in peril. It, it's bad, right? So I'm from rural Pennsylvania and I am intimately familiar with how dangerous the wildlife is there. Fortunately, I have never encountered a bear or anything when I've been out, but I have plenty of friends and family members and coworkers who they themselves have encountered wildlife or they have a friend or family member who has. Um, I know a lot of people who have lived in Alaska and it is crazy to hear some of their stories uh, of things that happened while they were there or to them. And actually like two weeks ago, and I'm not making this up guys, there is a guy that went to high school with me named Corey who went out to Wyoming to do some hunting with a hunting guide and two grizzly bears attacked them and Corey was able to get away but the hunting guide wasn't. The bears dragged him into the woods and they, they killed him. This stuff happens. I mean it's not like every day you're hearing about bear attacks but it is, I would say it's it's common and it is a true, you know, present danger that I'm always thinking about when I go hiking in certain areas, especially if it's not a well populated area and so on. But Misha has never thought about that. So we were home visiting my parents and Misha and my dad were going to go on sort of like a hike in the middle of nowhere woods, again, rural Pennsylvania. And my dad grabs a rifle and Misha's like, why do we need a rifle? You know, we're not going hunting. Like, what are we, you know, why? And of course he's from Germany where, you know, you just don't really have as much of a presence of uh, guns around either. So it was like really, you know, kind of overwhelming for him. And my dad told him some stories about, you know, the wildlife attacks that have happened in the specific area that they're going to. And Misha was like, oh, oh, this actually happened. It's like, okay. And then he understood why my dad was bringing a rifle because better safe than sorry. My dad's like, you know, if the bear comes at us, like I'd rather have this rifle and try to defend us than be their lunch. And that's, that's a legitimate thing to think about. And Misha, you know, he's done a lot of hiking in Germany, not so much in the Alps, but in other places. Um, and I've gone on several hikes with him and it's just never been like a thought that's come across his mind where like, hey, you need to think about, you know, what happens if you encounter a bear or some sort of dangerous animal and what will you do and so on. And here it's, it's something that you should really think about. All right, so for a far less scary one, sorry to bring up people getting mauled to death by bears, um, I will talk about mailboxes because that's an innocent topic, right? So our mailboxes are different, something that I never thought about until Misha pointed it out to me. Um, like I said, we've been driving a lot and you know, we live in the city where the mailboxes are more or less pretty much the same as what you would see in Germany. There are some differences, I don't want to get into it, but um, but when you get outside the city, you start seeing boxes sitting you know, on top of these pillars or stakes and you can pull them open and they have these red flags on them. Well, Misha was like, what are those red flags for? And I was like, oh, it's so when you mail a letter, you know, you put it into the mailbox and you raise that red flag and the mailman will know like, hey, there's a letter in here and they'll pay attention to it and take it out before they just, you know, start stuffing the mailbox with your mail. And he was like, what do you mean mail a letter out? And I was like, wait, you guys can't do that? And so it became this discussion where as it turns out in Germany, if you want to mail a letter, you pretty much have to go to the post office or you have to go to a large like communal mailbox thing to be able to mail your letters and we have those too but we also can mail out 
from our mailboxes like this, right? So like I said, you just put the letter into the mailbox. You can't like mail packages, guys. It's just letters, and as long as you have the correct postage for it, um, you turn, put up that red flag, and then the mailman takes on the responsibility and makes sure that it gets sent off. And then he was asking, well, how can they get the mail out? And I was like, they just open the mailbox. And he was like, but isn't it locked? I'm like, no, it's not locked. And, and like, again, it's like, so I found out that Germans lock their mailbox, so the owner of the mailbox will keep it locked. The mailman doesn't have a key. They can only put mail into the mailbox through like a slot on the, the box, and only the owner can access what's inside the box, right? Which makes sense, but for our system, since it's a sending and receiving, you know, deal there, then the mailman would have to be able to open it. So, and it's kind of crazy to think about them having like a bunch of keys. And he was asking me like, how do you make sure that nobody messes with your mail? Which is a legitimate question. But then I told him that, you know, in order to touch someone's mail, you have to be a certified mail handler and you have to have reason to be touching their mail as that certified mail handler. And otherwise it's a felony offense to touch someone's mail, which is a huge deal. Um, and I think it's, it's pretty much works as a deterrent because I don't really hear about people's mail getting messed with that much. I constantly hear about people's Amazon packages getting stolen off their porch. That sort of thing definitely happens, but I don't often hear about people's mail getting stolen out of their mailboxes. Something else that Misha picked up on, and it was something that I noticed too, um, is how many more children you see in the US compared to what you see in Germany. It is so many more kids, guys. And when I was in Germany, I remember looking around and being like, really though, like where are all the kids? Like we, I was living in a city and I expected to just see more, but there was like a serious absence of them. Now, I'm, it's not like it was this crazy weird world where there were no kids, right? There were kids, there were strollers, there were toddlers walking around, there were, you know, kids going to and from school. Uh, I saw children in Germany, but the amount was significant. And I just got the feeling in Germany that people didn't take their kids out as much. And I was actually told that when I got there, like, yeah, Germans don't take their kids out to eat as much and so on. Um, and in the US, it is so different. I mean, people are taking their kids grocery shopping, they're taking them to the mall, regular shopping, they're taking them to coffee shops and all restaurants at all times of day. People are taking their kids everywhere, right? And in Germany, it's just not like that. But I don't really know why. I mean, I know, let's talk numbers here, like the birth rate in Germany is a lot lower than what it is in the US and then just population numbers, I got that. But what's the cultural reason for Germans not really taking their kids out as much as as Americans? And I don't have kids, so I didn't really hang out with a lot of people in Germany that had kids to know like what Germans thought of, of this, like why they're not taking their kids out to restaurants and so on. So if you know, I'm really interested in this, please put it in the comments. I really want to learn from you guys, so thank you in advance. All right, I have a few more to go. So we've been dragging a lot here. Like I've been dragging Misha all over the East Coast uh, since he's gotten here and something he has shattered the glass for me is how many billboards we have. And I've noticed billboards, it's not like I just never realized how many we have, but to be honest, when I'm driving, I'm able to just kind of like block them from my field of vision so that I'm like focusing on the road and like the actual street signs that I need to pay attention to and the awful, awful drivers all around me. That's what I'm paying attention to. I'm not really looking at the billboards. Maybe I'll notice one here or there. Well, yeah, we have a lot of billboards as it turns out. Misha picked them out to me and now I can't help but notice how many we have. It's kind of outrageous. And then specifically, he has pointed out to me how many signs we have that promote Christianity. I would say that promote religion, but it, they don't promote all religions. They only promote Christianity. So you have a lot of billboards that will be like, Jesus will save you from your sins or give yourself to Jesus and like these types of signs. And then he also pointed out that we have a lot of military recruitment signs, which again, something I just never really paid attention to, but he's right. We have signs advertising the Marine Corps or advertising West Point, which is like the United States Military Academy 
signs advertising, you know, the National Guard or the reserves and so on to try to get people to, you know, I mean, it literally, they're trying to get people to join. So they have to advertise in that sense. And I could probably do, and I'm thinking about doing a whole video to talk about differences in military culture, to talk about this a little bit more and some other things. Um, but I know it's going to be a really controversial video because Germans feel very strongly about the military and I get it. Um, so that one's on the back burner for now, but maybe I'll work on it. Um, but yeah, so these billboards were just really surprising to, to Misha to see. And speaking of highways, and I know I said I wouldn't talk about boring ones that we all know, but guys, I have to address this one. The size difference between the US and Germany or Europe shocked the hell out of Misha. So he's a really smart guy, guys and he completely understood how big the US is, especially compared to Germany, right? He, he understands that. But I think that people still have a hard time really getting it until they come to the US, get in a car and start driving for hours and hours and hours just to get through one state or just two states, right? And then that's when it really starts to like settle in of like, this country is massive. It is massive. You have to drive so far to get anywhere in the US. And it's funny because his perception of distance has really changed since we've moved here together. So in Germany, I mean, I was always dragging him all over Germany, guys. Like, I love traveling. If you haven't checked out my Instagram yet, then maybe you don't know how much I love traveling but I love it. So like an ideal weekend for me is like getting out of my apartment and going somewhere new, whether it's like a whole new city or part of Washington DC or whatever. And in Germany it was awesome because you could get to all these like new cities so easily because it's such a small country compared to what I'm used to. Uh, so I was constantly taking him everywhere when I was living in Germany. And I remember, for example, I was like, Hey, I really want to go to Dresden. And he was like, Dresden because it's a four or five hour drive from where we were living in Mainz and I was like yeah like that's nothing it's just four hours like whatever we can do that and he was like that is a really long drive and I was just laughing I was like that is not that is nothing that drive is literally I have driven that far just to do a hike before right four hours is nothing. And so now that we're here and we're constantly like driving to my parents, which is like four hours away, we went to my sister's, which is an eight hour drive away and so on. He has really started to get used to this. And so if I'm like, Hey, you want to go to whatever city? And he's like, how far is it? I'm like, that's like a four hour drive. He'd be like, Oh, okay. That's not too bad. And I'm like, who are you? You're not my boyfriend anymore because in Germany, he would have put up such a fight against doing that long of a drive. And I would have had to really sell it to him. Like, no, we really want to go to this city. And this is why. All right. Last one. So when I picked up Misha from the airport, when he first flew in, it was at night and I I brought him to the apartment and he dropped off his luggage and he looked at me he's like I am starving and I was like all right let's go get you some food and I took him to a Mexican restaurant because I told him the whole time I was in Germany y'all have no idea how to do Mexican food here I could not find for the life of me anything that even remotely tasted like what I'm expecting Mexican food to be like and I was always telling him this and so I wanted to take him to a Mexican restaurant so he could eat real Mexican food and here I am talking about food again, and I know I said I wouldn't, but I can't help it, guys. I just really love food. So I take him to this Mexican restaurant. We're sitting on this, like, outdoor patio, and we're eating our tacos. And this restaurant is just down the street from my apartment, and I live on a really busy street, and it has, like, great nightlife. And like I said, it's at night, so people are coming to and from the bars. People are dressed up, you know, for their night out and stuff. And it... it was great people watching because Misha could not get over what some of these people were wearing. They were wearing crazy clothes to him, right? So I've talked about this before in like another video of mine where I said that the range of attire, like fashion choices that you see in the US is so wide, right? Like you get the whole gamut. But in Germany, people, you know, it's a much more narrow, uh, scale of what you'll see people wearing. Everyone kind of like falls within these, you know, smaller lines, right? 
And so here's Misha in the US and granted we're in like a big city and he is just watching everyone walk by like wide-eyed, like no way. Because we saw everything from just like plain clothes, like what I wear, to outfits that pretty much borderlined on costumes, complete with like neon wigs, right? Like we're seeing all sorts of stuff. And what was hilarious about it, and like what I pointed out to Misha, I was like, and notice how nobody cares. Nobody is staring at these people wearing these clothes because it's like normal. And I mean, I wouldn't say it's like normal, but it's it's completely perfectly acceptable. And we're so used to seeing people wearing whatever they wanna wear. You wanna wear pajama pants? You go ahead and wear pajama pants. Like you wanna wear jeans that are so ripped up, they're barely even jeans, go ahead and wear them. Do whatever you want. Like, I don't care. It doesn't matter to me. But in Germany, it's just, it's really doesn't, it's not, it doesn't feel like this, right? Like there were a couple times I remember distinctly walking to and from the gym in my, um, in my athletic clothes, or maybe I had just finished a run and I was like walking back to the apartment and people were just like staring at me so hard. And guys, it's not because I had on like a pair of booty shorts or really tight pants or a top or something. Like I was wearing normal gym clothes, but I was getting stared at because nobody wears gym clothes out and around in Germany, or at least nobody that I saw. Like it was very rare to see anyone wearing gym clothes. They normally changed at the gym and so on. And so whenever in Germany, I felt like if I wore something that was a little like off from what like people would normally wear, I felt like I would get stared at. And here it is just not like that, right? The only person doing the staring was Misha. Um, now, of course, if you wore some of those outfits in like my hometown, again, rural Pennsylvania, you're going to get stared at. But if you compare Germany city, you know, a German city to a US city, you know, it's a stark contrast between the two um, in terms of attire and then like the reaction to it. All right, guys, that's all I've got for you today. I hope that you really like this video. And honestly, there is so many more things that I could talk to you guys about and I'm looking at doing a part two. I'm keeping track of things that Misha's noticing and I'm also thinking about doing a video where I talk about like what he expected the U.S. to be or what he expected to encounter in the U.S. versus what he actually did encounter. So if that's something that you're interested in seeing, let me know. And the best way to let me know is by giving this video a thumbs up. Tell me in the comments if you want to see a part two or another type of video like this or what you thought of this video. And please, guys, share it with your friends. That helps me out so much you have no idea and again if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet just go ahead and click subscribe especially if this is like your eighth video of mine that you've watched like just give into it and subscribe it's completely free for you okay and thank you so much to my patrons you guys are awesome i cannot tell you how much i appreciate you thanks guys i'll see you next time bye